Good morning and welcome to St. Margaret's in beautiful Palm Desert, California. Welcome to this service of morning prayer. And I want to thank everyone who had took part in uh, putting this service together this week. If you haven't already, download the bulletin. Uh, you can pause the video and download it so you can follow along more closely. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, this week, the clothing giveaway has uh, resumed. Thank you. On Thursday morning, volunteers, uh, all led by Chet Hecht, uh, gave away clothing uh, to folks in our community. We continue with the Neighbors for Neighbors program, and I am so grateful for the volunteers who come every week, who give of their time and their energy uh, to make sure that now upward to 700 families each week continue to receive food. Uh, that is so desperately needed. Thank you again to all the volunteers. You should have already received your stewardship packet in the mail. If you have not returned your pledge card, please do so as quickly as possible. And uh, you can also go to our website and you can pledge online. It will only take a minute or two. And uh, we ask that you uh, pledge as soon as you can so that we can begin to budget for next year. We've also added another opportunity to give or a way to give, and that is through texting. And you will see at the bottom of this video uh, how you can do that. Uh, I'm not used to texting. I've done it a few times to give to things like the American Red Cross. It works and it's safe and it's easy to do. So just text uh, the number and the letters and you can give securely and quickly online. Lastly, you should have received another letter in the mail uh, from me in the vestry. If you haven't, it's on the way. We are, you heard it here, we are resuming in-person worship starting on November 1st. It will be a special day in many ways, but it is also the Feast of All Saints. So on All Saints Sunday, November 1st, at 7.30 a.m. for the early bird folks and 9.30 a.m., we will begin to resume in-person worship service of Holy Eucharist. We will be on the labyrinth outdoors. And in the letter that is coming to you on the back of the letter, our list of protocols that we all must follow in order to remain safe. The most important thing though to remember is that you have to reserve your seat. We are limited in the number of people that are allowed to worship together. And so you must go on our website and reserve your seat or your seats. So please do that, it's an easy process. If you have trouble with that, you can call Deb in the office. Uh, Debbie Jansma will be happy uh, to take your reservation. And I ask once again that you just please be patient with uh, the clergy and staff as we uh, ramp this up, as we have been doing for some time now, doing church differently. And it's gonna take a lot of patience from all of us, but I hope that you will uh, come and participate uh, together. If all goes well, and if we find that demand for in-person worship has, uh, is, is here and exists, we will add more worship services. So if you're not able to get in on the labyrinth worship uh, during the month of November, we will add more worship. We do not want anyone to be left out. So anyone desiring to come on campus to worship, uh, we want to be sure we can accommodate you. It's wonderful to be with you today if not in person, then at least in spirit. And I pray that this week, uh, the spirit of God might dwell richly in you. God bless you. If there's anything you need, please reach out to us at St. Margaret's. Take care.
welcome to St. Margaret's.
grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of God is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people, he said. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Jesus. 
Join me as we say this psalm in unison. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord is sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak of it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath of what is coming. The word of the Lord.
reading from Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Ever living God, open our ears and our hearts that we may better understand the mystery of your word. Well, good news. Today's gospel does not have a confusing parable of which we are to make sense. But don't lean back and get too comfortable in your chair. The reading from Matthew has a difficult confrontation between Jesus and two adversaries, which may leave us just as perplexed as when we hear the parables. The passage opens with some Pharisees and Herodians trying to put Jesus off his game by buttering him up with praise. Trying to trap Jesus with their own insincerity, the Pharisees and Herodians then asked him, Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? No matter how Jesus answered, he would be in trouble with one group or the other. The Pharisees and the Herodians were opposite sides of the socio-political spectrum of the time, but were united in their desire to be rid of Jesus. Surprisingly, Jesus asked them to produce the coin used to pay taxes to the emperor. Jesus takes control by asking, whose head is this and whose title? They answer that it is the emperor who has elevated his title to son of the divine Augustus, high priest. Jesus did not answer their question, but countered with a statement that amazed the Pharisees and the Herodians, and continues to amaze us today. Give, therefore, to the emperor those things which are the emperor's. Give to God the things that are God's. But let's back up to the original question asked by those trying to trap Jesus. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? What if Jesus had turned that question back on his questioners? What do you think they would have said? Did anyone have a choice about paying the tax on their agricultural yield and properties demanded by the emperor? The Pharisees represented the oppressed commoners who were the least able to afford the payment, but protesting the tax could be ruinous to the reputation of the Pharisees. And for the Pharisees to be in possession of a denarius in the temple was considered blasphemous. It violated the, the commandments of worshiping other gods before the God of Israel as well as worshiping engraved images of other gods. The emperor considered himself to be the god of the realm. What if Jesus came and asked us this same hard question today? 
Is it lawful to pay taxes to the government? I don't think any of us enjoy paying taxes, but most of us do comply with those laws, whether we like it or not. The other part of Jesus' answer should be easy to answer today, as it ought to have been in Jesus' time. What things do we give to God? Everything. But I would suggest this answer is not so easy. Life is complicated. We have all kinds of influences on our time and money. There are demands that we believe we cannot ignore. If we do not do our job well, we risk being fired. If we do not pay all of our bills on time, we may end up having to pay penalties. If we do not take care of ourselves, we may not be able to work to earn money to take care of our families. We are also assaulted by advertising and social media trying to get us to spend our money on things that will surely make our lives better. The demands are never ending. So what things should we give to God amidst the turmoil and demands on our lives? The answer really is everything. In the first chapter of Genesis, God was busy creating the heavens and the earth. In verse 6, he said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. We were created by God in his image, and his likeness is stamped upon our hearts. When God had created the male and the female in his image, he gave them dominion over all the animals upon the earth and in the sea and the plants on the earth. God then looked at everything he had made and declared it was good. We are good. We are God's beloved children formed in his image with his likeness stamped upon us. We need to believe that we are God's wonderful creation with God's image embedded in our inmost beings. We have been called to witness to the world about God's goodness and abundance and that God, God's love touches every part of us and our lives. God's likeness is what we are called on to project to the world. Knowing all those things, if we were confronted by Jesus asking what things we should give to God, would we be able to give a definite answer or just murmur, I don't know? Look again with me at the list of influences I, didn't, I gave you. Do we give our jobs to God? Are we thankful for employment and the money we earn? And do we involve God in all the ways we spend our money? Giving thanks for food, homes, cars, insurance, and our church? How about our relationships with friends and family? Do we trust God to guide us when we have tough decisions to make about our children? Can God help us when those relationships are broken? And finally, do we remember to say thank you to God for all our blessings, or do we only go to God when we need help? I think you get my point. Everything we do should reflect the image of God working in our lives. There is nothing in which we should hesitate to include God. But if we are honest with ourselves, there are probably still things we may feel too ashamed to give to God. I am talking about the dark little parts we have kept tucked away because they are too hurtful to bring into the light. I have battled with anxiety most of my adult life 
and I have medicated with food. That habit has led to obesity. Obesity has contribute, contributed to all my health issues. But it is just the consequence of not telling all the things which have caused the anxiety in my life. I am working on addressing my issues, but my habits are very ingrained, like an addiction. I have given this sugar addiction over to God and taken it back time and again. That is my shame. I don't seem to be able to trust God with something that continues to damage my health. One way I am working on surrendering my shame is to remind myself every day in whose image I am created. Every morning I tell myself that I am the beloved daughter of God, and He loves everything about me, that I am good. I do not believe that Jesus would try to trap us by asking us what things we should give to God if we met us today. God does not work that way. But I also believe God wants us to be honest when we do answer that question. We know that saying everything belongs to God is the right answer. But it takes courage to examine those things in our lives that we have held deep inside for fear of losing God's love for us. We are all God's beloved children, created in His image, and there is nothing about us that God does not want to love us through. So join me today in making a courageous decision to give everything to God. I invite you to think about the words of hymn 665 as we sing it today, especially the first verse. All my hope on God is founded. He doth still my trust renew. Me through change and chance he guideth, only good and only true. God unknown, he alone calls my heart to be his own. My name is Chris Davidson. I'm the co-chair of stewardship here at St. Margaret's. Each Sunday for the next couple of weeks, we're going to share a short interview with a parishioner, giving witness to how St. Margaret's has impacted their lives. Take a look with me. Walking into the sanctuary, it's like a breath of fresh air to me. And I remember my first few months here watching the processions very closely um, it's like nothing I'd ever seen before. It, it was so um, otherworldly to me, so beautiful. I, it's almost like, you know, I felt it in my soul. I came from a, from a series of evangelical churches <laughs> that didn't allow a lot of questioning within the faith, and so the pattern was, um, start to ask questions and get pushed out of the community and then go to another church and start to ask questions and get pushed out of the community. And the first thing I noticed here is that I could ask questions and people didn't try to give me answers and they would listen to the questions and go, yeah, I have that same question too. It wasn't someone telling me what my life needed to look like in order to be worthy of God's love. When I think about giving to the church, I think about um, what the church has meant to me, um, the family that I have here, what I, I believe in, um, the ministry capabilities of the church and the ministry of the church. And so for me, um, even as a single mom, it's important to give what I can to help with those ministries. Um, I did, I was laid off during COVID as well. And so that's 
presented some um, difficulties, and yet I've still, I've continued to give. I've continued to um, give as promised. Not being able to be in church regularly has been difficult for me. I think a large part of that is because I am newer at St. Margaret's and the safe place that it became for me very quickly and kind of having that pulled out from underneath me has been difficult. I do look forward to when we can meet together again and, and be together and that will be a beautiful day. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I'm weak or whether I'm strong, whether I'm sure or maybe confused, feeling loved or feeling used, I know a place.
please join in proclaiming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, ruler of all, grant that our nation and its citizens may respond to your call to live as your people. Grant that we may live out all civic virtues in honesty and integrity. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your son and our brother, amen. O great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to our hearts' longings for the healing of our world. Please add your petitions for the world and for those suffering who are close to you. We pray for those who have died, grieving losses from COVID-19, from acts of violence, and from all the perils of this life, including those we name. We offer these prayers trusting that you are seeing our needs beyond what we know to express. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. 
Let us bless the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.